Okay, a bit more about the trifecta method because I'm really impressed with that and how it's working. So these are the sets that I had in these containers over a seed warming tray. Okay, that's like a little seed warming cloth that you buy at Walmart. It just keeps it a little warmer and it seems to work better that way making GANs. So um, it's a way to make all three GANs at once. Um, no LED light, I just use um, these uh, electrical alligator clip connectors. This set is just made with a nano coated coil as the um, driving force, I guess, for them with the usual setup. This is CO2, so it's across from a zinc plate. This will be CH3, so it's across from a piece of iron from an old barrel in the backyard. This is CuO2, so it's across from just a plain piece of copper. And I set these up on, oh, let me come over to this one. Same setup, but this um, set has a wax coated um, copper coil, a nano coated copper coil. And that's with beeswax. When I tested for the beeswax, it said it would be the a thing to coat the nano coating to preserve it and not interfere with the process. And it looks like it's doing great. It was a little slower. I noticed that these, I set them up uh, <laughs> Monday morning about 2 a.m. And by about 10 a.m., they were all making GANs, looking really good. These took um, till, I guess, about 9 o'clock that evening um, to start looking like they were making GANs, but then they got started pretty good. This one, the CUO, took a while longer than the other ones. Um, I would say that one even took a couple days. Um, so I started these all on Monday night at 2 a.m., and now it's Thursday at noon. So all doing really well. I guess if you want GANs really fast, this is a good method. I mean, basically in you know less than 12 hours, it was making good stuff. This one, more like a couple days worth of time. But then again, the advantage would be the nano coating is preserved with the wax covering. And I'm gonna show a couple of things here. This is this is the set. Okay, so this is the um, items separate, separated, so you can kind of see how they're set up. And um, it's, <clears throat> um, here's the CO2, so it's a nano coated coil across from a zinc plate. And the zinc I've been using is the same one I bought back in November. It's this, um, it's called Moss Stop. It's sold for, um, for roofing to keep the moss off. And it cuts real easy with these kind of little deals and rolls and, and whatnot. So I cut it this way. And you can see this piece here. I just thought it would be cute if it was circular like this one. So I just took this and then, and then just kind of rolled it in you know, a little round form. <clears throat> and then the CH3 is, you know, that's a piece of a um, old iron tub that's been sitting out in the backyard. So I, what I do is I clean it up really good so it doesn't have loose rust on it, and then I put it in. And then, of course, this one's just with a piece of plain copper. And it's just basically the, it goes in a circle. So, you know, this nano-coated one is connected to this one. And then because they're all in a circle... This zinc plate is connected, you know, to the nano coating in the next container, and then its um, iron plate is connected to the nano coated one in the copper oxide, and you know, of course, this nano coated one is connected to the copper plate, and so I'm hoping that shows up in here. Let me get a little further back so you can kind of see what's connected to what, and help people make the connections. And cute thing number two is um, mix lots of amino acids. Both of them do, the wax one and the not wax one. And Linda came up with this way of just dipping a piece of plastic in there. And you can do it repeatedly. Like I'll put it in here, pick up the aminos, and then I hang it up here, <laughs> hang them out to dry. And then later what you can do is scrape the um, amino acids off with a, um, with a scalpel or a, a knife and then you have the powdered amino acids. The other way to do it is to put this in a container of distilled water, which I do that as well to have the liquid aminos. So any of the above works. So I hope this is inspiring to people. It really 
is making a lot of good GANs um, with both the wax coated coil and the not wax coated coil. And my preference would be to make as few <laughs> nano coated coils as possible, you know, preserve that nano coating. So we'll see how it does when it's repeatedly used over and over. Um, you can see this is after what three or four days that the, the nano coating is sloughing off. Um, it's more brown than black for sure. And then this one, yeah, pretty much gone. So I'll end up probably shutting these down and harvesting them today because I don't want it to go too far into not being nano coated. For some reason, the, the one in the the CO2, you know, usually hit, it'll uh, knock the nano coating off in the CO2 because it runs so fast. And it's not with this one. It actually looks pretty good, like I could let that run for quite a while. And I think maybe it's preserving it because it's using some of the ex excess elect electrical charge from these to run these two. Because it usually, you know, maybe takes some electrical charge to run these two. So to me, that's the point of the trifecta is to harvest the extra charge from this and use it to run these two. So, then we have this one, which I chose to put beeswax on both the nano-coated wire and the zinc plate to see what would happen there. And it's made some. It's not real impressive. There's a <laughs> there's the wax-covered coil, and then this is beeswax. Now I dipped it in beeswax, and. Um, and then in the bottom of this, you can't see it from the side. You can see it from the top. The top would be green if there wasn't stuff in the bottom. So it's got, you know, about a cap full of um, GANs in there. And when I test and ask about it, it says it's just about pure CO2, which is nice because all my other batches um, are testing about 50-50 CO2 and zinc. So... I was after some pure CO2 GANs to see um, for some applications for trees and agriculture and stuff. So I did notice that the closer I put these two, the better it seemed to work. Um, I mean, I had them pretty much snuggled up on each other most of the time, and I did keep it in a warm, um, one of these seed tray warmers, and I put that down in a bucket and that keeps them warm through the night. 